If you're anything like me, when you're working on a project, you run out of space pretty quick. Sometimes you need an extra table to put tools on. Sometimes you need an extra table to put cutting boards, anything like that to dry. Or you just need a small desk where you can sit at and come up with ideas or plan out your project. This is my folding table. Let me show you how I made it. This is a perfect beginner woodworking project because it uses zero complicated joinery. We're just making all square cuts here. We're gonna use some glue, screws, and some nails. That's it. If you'd like to pick up plans for this project to help you make it step by step, you can go to 731woodworks.com slash store. If you use the code folding table, I give you 20% off any order over $4.99. That includes our board butter and plans. Go check us out. First thing I'll do, I'm just gonna take some plywood and rip them down into three and a half inch strips. And these are 48 inches long, but we're gonna cut them down. So if you have shorter pieces, you can use those. We're gonna cut four legs out first. I'm gonna take the three and a half inch strips to the miter saw and we'll set up my stop block because it just makes it so much faster. The length of the legs are going to depend on how tall you want your table. I want mine about 34 inches. So I'm gonna cut four pieces at 33 inches and then I'm gonna cut four pieces at 29 and a half inches. And then we're gonna stack them together to basically create a half lap. And you'll see what we're doing with that later. Now the leg assemblies are cut out, we're gonna put them together. We're gonna put a short piece on top of the long piece. I'm using wood glue just to help them bind together. Then I'm using brad nails to make sure it sticks while the glue dries. Now, you know, if you don't have a brad nailer, you can just put weight on top of this and they will dry together and be solid as a rock. You don't have to worry about it. So I'm just gonna use my track saw here to make some strips of three and a half inches because it's easier to cut these here versus the table saw. You could use whatever you got. If you got a straight edge and a circular saw, we certainly work there. Now that I got those strips cut, I'm gonna take this 36 inch piece and this 29 and a little over six, almost a 16th inch piece, lay those between the two legs on the back. That's gonna give me a spacer. This 36 inch piece will go on top and I'll glue and tack that in place. And that'll basically give us our back. First thing I'm gonna do is put this corner in place and I wanna make sure that's flush on the outside and the top and then I'm gonna tack that together. We're gonna to make sure that's square before we put any brad nails there. Then I'm gonna put the support piece that runs across the back. Make sure you're using glue here. Make sure everything's flushed up top and bottom. Tack that in place with brad nails. And then the other side on the leg, we're gonna do it just like we did the first leg. When you're done, you should have a piece that looks similar to this that's already ready to go. All right, so let's lay out the front legs. We got the small piece that's 17 and three quarter. We got our front leg. We're going to line everything up, make sure everything is square. Full disclosure, I messed up. So it's, it's not unfixable at this point, which is great. So what happened was if I put these on there, there's gonna be hinges, they're gonna hinge down, right? Or fold flat-ish against the back. Then if I leave it like it is now, these two pieces will stack on top of each other. Well, that may not be a big deal, but how are we gonna collapse the top? So now, I got to, I'm gonna shorten these aprons up basically about an inch and five sixteenths. That way when they close, they close about a sixteenth inch gap away from each other. That's the theory. So after I shortened the pieces up, I just installed hinges and I'm just using the regular door hinges here. And while you can kind of notch these out for kind of a mortise so they sit down in there, I'm not doing that because it's really not that important on something like this. So I'm just installing them with the three screws. When I install the legs on there, I'm gonna make sure I square those up as best I can and then attach those uh, with the three screws included. Trial and error. <laughs> so now what I need to do is I've got a block that I've just glued two pieces of wood together, two pieces of plywood, and I'm gonna set it right in the middle and that's where the tabletop will hinge. And that will allow everything to fold flat, I think. So I'm gonna put that there, at, but, but, since I've already got these attached, they need to be a little bit shorter. And if I cut it just a smidge, then it's gonna move this in more. And then I'm worried that these pieces will be too short. So I think I'm just gonna rip these down, like just an eighth inch off of each one of these and it'll fit just right. You don't have to worry about that if you pick up the plans because I'll already have all this worked out, which is trial and error. So the premise is that the tabletop will be here. I can attach it here, just a single sheet of plywood and it'll fold flat pretty much. So I'm gonna attach this block and we're just gonna use glue and screws to do that with. I want the top to sit perfectly flush here with the back piece as well as with the legs. If I mount this flush, then it's not going to be flat because when it's closed, it'll be kicked up in the back and we don't want that, we want a flat top. So I'm gonna inset this just enough so that 
when this is completely closed, it will be flat with the back and the face of the legs or the top of the legs. Using just a scrap piece of MDF, I'm going to be able to set the depth of this block using that. And I know exactly where flat or square will be all along that back edge. Now that I press that up, I move the hinge out here and then you can see that it'll be flat across here once everything is screwed tight. Now I need to just rip the top down. I was gonna use the table saw to begin with, but I'm out of room. So I'm just gonna break out the track saw again and just make this rip. And then I'll cut it the final length on the table saw. I'm gonna cut this just about 42-ish inches by 20. You can cut this whatever size you want, but pretty much you want it to be just outside the frame. I'm gonna have about an inch overhang all the way around. Now we're gonna set the base. Now we're gonna attach the hinge to the top. Pretty simple, just three screws. Now we got to set up stops for the legs so we know where they go every time you set it up. So if this leg is able to swing in and out, we need a stop for it to land on at 90 degrees or close to, we're not building a clock. So it doesn't really have to be 100% 90, but you do kind of want it close, sort of. As long as it's close, it's fine. It's fine. Don't stress. It's gonna be all right. So I've cut four strips that are eight inches by one inch thick of this three quarter inch plywood. We're gonna put one on each side. What that's gonna do is lock it in on the top. You'll be able to bend this or fold it onto these slides to lock it in place. Just gonna inset it a little bit, glue and brad nail it in. Right now I'm just gonna attach these two strips on each side of the leg and that's going to give it a place to lock in. Now I tried eight inch long and they're just a little bit too long because I don't have enough flex backwards, but I cut them four inches long and this is gonna work well to lock everything nice and in place. Next thing I did was just took a, a chamfer bit. This is a miniature chamfer bit. So it's not taking a whole lot off, but it will give me a little bit of a kind of an angled ledge down into that spot. So it should glide in there a little better after I sand it. Because I'm only using a single sheet of plywood here, it may have a tendency to give just a little bit in the middle, uh, depending on how much weight you put on here. This isn't recommended for a ton of weight, but if you may put something on there and it starts to warp or whatever, I kind of feel like it needs a little extra support. That's what I'm getting at. So I ripped a piece of plywood that's three quarters of an inch thick or just barely over three quarter. And we're gonna, instead of it being this way, in other words, the same uh, direction as the plywood, we're gonna flip it this way. This will give it some rigidity because we're gonna glue and brad nail this on along the front edge. You could actually wrap the whole thing in hardwood or whatever you wanted to do, but just to keep the look the same, we're gonna use plywood, tack this on. That should help shore it up a little bit. I don't actually expect this to be super solid. It's not meant to be a work table as solid as the one I'm on. It's meant to be a temporary, uh, basically a, an extra table to help to put things on when I need to dry things or whatever. Folds up pretty flat. You can store that against the wall in a closet, whatever you need to do. And then to fold it out, we're just gonna extend it up. Bring the leg around and lock it into that uh, slot we've got. Do the other side the same way. harder to do from the back side. That's fairly solid table for what it's used for. I just needed an extra space. Sometimes when you're working, you need to throw some tools on there while you're working at the regular workbench or throw some materials on there or whatever. I think this will serve the purpose. What's great about this design is you can actually make this as a folding desk if you just need you know, a place to for kids to do homework or whatever and just be able to fold this out, let them do uh, their tasks, the drawing table, whatever you wanted, fold it up, get it out of your way. It's multifunction, so you don't, wouldn't have just needed to use it in the shop. Of course, we made it for the shop. So now word of caution, this is a light duty table, desk, small projects, maybe a couple of cutting boards while they're drying, that kind of thing. It is not to hold weight. If you put a bunch of weight on here, it has the tendency to rack and then possibly collapse just based on this design. It's not made for heavy duty stuff and I, I didn't want it for heavy duty stuff. I wanted it to be able to store it out of the way. Now you can shore it up a little bit by adding a couple of things. If you made these legs a basically a U-shaped two-piece similar to what we did on the back and then attach two different hinges, one on the top, one on the bottom. And then if you did that, you could add that cross brace across the bottom, like a, an apron across the bottom. And then that would also help it. I mean, on the back side. Oh yeah. No feet off the ground. I'm 200 pounds and it holds me on the back side. I would be concerned about putting 200 on the front and or it's shifting. 
If you'd like to make one of these for yourself, plans available, link in the description, go check them out. If you like this build video, you're gonna love this build video where I built a tool cart. You need one of those in your shop. <laughs> click that box, click in the box, get your big old virtual fist bump. Or if you want a mobile workbench that's much more sturdy than this, check that out right there.